What is that in my tree? Ten caterpillars. Well, so what does that mean? So Nathan, did you ever yes. think we'd get to this point? No. You didn't? No. <laughs> yes, of course. So, but course. seriously. You have a good team in place. We have a great team. But yeah. the process of figuring out how to heat and air condition a one season cottage yeah. with no basement, it was a challenge, right? It's a challenge. And the placement of the equipment and to spread it all out because it's a tricky space. And I remember you explaining to me how because we were splitting up our equipment mm -hmm. into different zones, mm -hmm it was going to be more efficient. So you ended up with four units, which are fan coils. They're like a furnace, but they use hot water. So it allowed us to have one centralized boiler system in the new little addition, which was great. Then we have four separate small units. So they're kind of spread out and divided the house into quarters, if you will. And that just allowed for a lot more control. We could separate bedrooms from the great room space without impacting the great room. All right, follow me over here. What you see tucked in the corner here is our Infinity Variable Speed Fan Coil Unit. Here in the attic, we've got our horizontal here, vertical downstairs. We have just incredible adaptability capability. Are you happy that Carrier is part of this project? We are absolutely thrilled that we were invited to have Carrier and Carrier Enterprise featured in this uh, incredible project. It's pretty much the most efficient system that Carrier offers, and uh, I think they invented air conditioning, so that's... Uh, they did? I Carrier think invented so. air conditioning? I think so, yeah. Wow. Well, thank you, Carrier, because we didn't yeah. know if we needed air conditioning. So we asked yeah. our neighbors, and they all said, just do it. Just do it. Was there one demand that she had that you just thought, oh my god? Um, yeah, I would say, at first, the challenge of don't impact the great room in, in any way. Well, how are we going to heat it? So we had to find a happy medium there and put them in selective spots and, you know, she won't even notice. So um, that was probably the biggest challenge. I come up here on Saturdays, I clean up. Like, Rick keeps a really clean job site. However, there's still dust and dirt. The biggest hiccup right now is the gas connection and the time that it, that may take because of the proximity to the lake, but... Um, Have you told Linda about that yet? Yeah. That will be resolved. I don't know <laughs> if she's aware of the, uh, the potential date, <laughs> but yeah, she's, she's on board, so yeah. Um, and yeah, that's about, that's about it. I think you have 10 caterpillars. Well, they're recent because they weren't there last week. Oh. Well, they'll eat all the leaves. There's so many things to worry about. <laughs> well, I guess I better call Mike, the tree guy. So in this room, we have the board and batten, which is the beautiful old fur. Love it. Which you can see above the window yeah. here. But then when you get into the old kitchen, it turns into cedar, right? Tongue and groove cedar, yes. Tongue and groove cedar. So we have to decide what to do. And my first instinct was, let's continue the board and batten. But you pointed out that it's a different thickness than the B groove. Yes. But what do you think is going to happen here? Well, the ceiling's going to stay tongue and groove cedar, obviously, because the two right. sides are the same. Right. Here you have the benefit of the fireplace separating the batten from the cedar. Right, so, so that doesn't works. doesn't look too bad here. But here. But here, here you have to figure out a way to do a transition. Yeah. So we could dress up the beam oh, with make maybe that a the solid piece of Douglas fir. Yeah. Wrap it down this way. And make it the end point. And then that's the end point and then you have two different walls coming together. That I way. like that idea. Thank you, Rick. You're welcome. Okay, good. Let's go back to worrying about the windows. So we have limestone coming for here. We have two sizes to look at today. It's going to be a herringbone pattern. So we just did cardboard so we could see which size felt right. So that's one size. I think it's a bit big. This is 4 by 16. This is more likely going to be the size. Much better. So that's the way to do it. Make a cardboard template because it's no fun if it arrives and you have to cut it on site. It's a lot more work. 
Our bedroom's looking good. These are bathtubs for all over. And the new windows are in, and all the patching's been done, so the walls are ready to take a little stain. Remember, this is the room I promised I wouldn't paint. And look at the closet. I think that we're gonna have two doors that will be like Japanese screens that will just come and gently close here. And they'll be beautiful and different from the wood on the walls. So that's the idea. This is bedroom bathroom two. So as you can see, Jason, I got a big Kohler delivery. I've got a lot of Kohler going on. It's everywhere. My job tomorrow, which is Saturday, is to go around with my lists and label each fixture and fitting so it goes to the right bathroom. Because otherwise, it probably won't. I love these windows. First of all, they're natural fur. There's no crank. You know the ugly cranks? You just pull the screen open, you open the latch, and you push out. That's it. I love these windows. Of course, I'm told that they're totally impractical because the bugs can get in, but oh well. The old house had lots of little mullions on all the windows, and I wanted less wood and more glass because it lets in more light and it looks a little bit more modern, like modern farmhouse. I was a little worried about how it would go with the house, but it's worked out. It's fantastic. So that's a win. So these are testers. So I started with Iron Mountain. I thought that's the way we were going to go for the windows, but it ended up being too light. Do you know which one won? Um, that one. This one. Yes. Yes. Oh, I picked it. Yes. Black Beauty. <laughs> it's the right one. And Darius did a little trick to make it all look like one unit. So I don't like that vertical being light. See, he brought his dark paint right to here, stopped it. And now this is pashmina. So all the window frames will be pashmina. These are all Benjamin Moore colors. Nice? Yeah, that's nice. This is the mudroom laundry room. We're not doing hardwood in here. We're doing something easy that looks old. I ended up finding a company in Iowa who slices old brick. We send you the inside cut. And so you get to choose your colors. And I chose gray, black, a kind of caramel color. You lay them with lots of grout in between. And then you seal them. So it's going to look nice and old and yeah, weathered. exactly. And I thought it'd be great with the old original chimney. You would think in Ontario, in a brick province, that we would be able to do it. But we don't do it here. I hope they get across the border. <laughs> Have you seen how they do this? Look at this. This truck has a machine in the back of it. This is where they make the east troughs. This is where they make them, right here. Did you know that? They put the copper there, and they, they form it, and it comes out in these long tube things, and then they cut it off. How cool is that? OK, I made this. Perfect. You like it? Perfect. This is a downspout. This is a strap that was custom made, and this is how you attach the downspout to the house. You know, you usually see these fancy things, but we want a clean, modern country. Very clean, beautiful. How long have you been working on this project? Uh, I've been here since June working on this project. It's getting a little bit cold here, um, especially in the mornings with the breeze coming from the lake. Uh, but you can't not enjoy the view at the same time, so it's a little bit of 50-50 balance there. Yeah. Not a bad job. Not a bad job at all. Uh, that's a good question. I don't know what they're up to in here today. Um, boys, what are you up to in here? We're uh, working on our gymnastics routine. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, we're getting all the duct work hooked up for the heaters in here for the house. We're only about probably two weeks from closing up the house completely, the whole outside will be done. Has the kitchen been ordered? Of course the kitchen's ordered. The kitchen's been ordered. It's a due for installation the first week of December. The heat will be turned on and we'll be inside worrying about how to preserve the beauty and make it even better. So that's gonna be exciting. It may look like a warm summer day, but in fact, it's mid-November and it's starting to get cold and the house is sealed up and insulated and it's almost heated. 
and doesn't look fantastic, we're all ready to tackle the inside. Whoa, wait a minute, Linda. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did you do to the floor? Oh, the floor is gone. You said you weren't changing the floor. I know, but I am. This used to be an old floor. It was oak, same as the living room. It was narrow boards and it ran across the room. It was fine before because the dining room stopped at that line, so it would have run with the length of the dining room. But now that this is the new length of the great room going right through the kitchen, we have to run floorboards with the length of the kitchen. Rick's made the new mantle, and they have to figure out how to end it. How are you going to resolve it? You're busy. There's a lot of math going on over yeah, there. Yeah, a lot right of now. math. You know, man, they have to mansplain it because I can't understand it. And then they run away. Yeah, because they really have no idea what they're going to do. The original mantle wrapped around the fireplace, and the old mantle was not nearly as deep as this one. One of the options was to cut a really sharp piece that just went like this, which may have not looked proportional when you see a nine inch deep piece here and then a little piece on the side, so. Yeah, she didn't like that? She didn't like that. <laughs> so you're in the kitchen and you feel like going to your bedroom or into the living room and you don't have to walk all the way around anymore. This is called a jib door. Our master carpenters have taken the board and batten that was here and they've applied it to the door. And on the inside, I think I'm gonna wallpaper it. So this is gonna be very decorative inside, English decorative. So you're going to see lots of progress since the last time we looked at the exterior. This siding, it's real cedar. The experts at Western Red Cedar did a lot of work and figured it out for me. And I did some research and found out that it's a renewable resource pre-finished so that it'll weather gracefully and I just love the rugged nature of it and the way the knots have been pushed back so it feels kind of grayed. I think it's fabulous. Look how it goes with the roof. No, it's very successful. Now these posts, I have to tell you about these posts. Oops, they're still sticky <laughs> because they're issues here putting, you know, coating on them. Our master carpenter made the boxes and he did it so perfectly that you'd think they're solid beams. They're very beautiful. And he copied the design of the bracket from the original house. And then next week, the phantom screens go in. Won't that be great? And they'll go in right across here. So we're all ready for them. And we're keeping the old ceiling of the original porch. And I love the fact that we have all these different colors of wood. And our heat is supposed to be here in two weeks. So it'll be soon. Good, because the snow is going to start to fly. I know. I'm aware of that. <laughs> and last year we were up here, it was really cold. Freezing. But wow, here we are, you know, look, it's a year later and look how far we've come. It's fantastic. We'll have a kitchen in two weeks. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs>